Like I said, we've worked together now for a few years, and, and we've all, anybody have a computer? Everybody have a computer that's ever had a problem? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. His, his way of looking at it, and I've had the, the, the chance to talk to some of his clients, um, I use the term, it's not his, it's a bulletproof system. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a different philosophy of looking at your IT department and putting you in charge of your IT department, the money that you're going to spend, the, the failures, if you will, that you're willing to put up with. But I've talked with this customer, the client that I'm thinking about right now has gone eight years, nine years? Ten years. Ten years. Two, that's not a lot of it. Ten years without unscheduled downtime. You know, how many of us can say that with the way that we're handling our IT department? And this is a company with a lot of computers, so it's a completely different way than certainly what I was looking at. In, in terms of keeping the IT department running. He's done, he's proven it with his, um, the, the major company that he was affiliated with, with Powell uh, Equipment. And then he's also taken that now to the industry at large and the marketplace and is doing some fantastic things for some uh, other companies to help them with their IT department. So, like and like this, please. Thank you. Thank you. As you said, my name's Mike Powell, and uh, basically uh, I'm the director of the IT information systems for the Powell companies. And the Powell companies have offices in Tennessee and in West Virginia, and uh, they do about two hundred million dollars a year uh, fund mailing and uh, building coal plants. And here recently, uh, building centrifuges that were sold all over the world by Canon Machines. Uh, now, the Canon Machines just got bought up by F.L. Smith, if you ever heard of them. Uh, they're a global industry uh, with about 15,000 employees and offices all over the world. They're all tied together in this huge network. Uh, and the Canon Machine had bought up so much of the centrifuge market that uh, they. Uh, 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 they were attracting uh, sales offers every year. And finally, uh, we went ahead and, and sold the kind of machine. Now, <clears throat> when I first went to work for Powell Companies, I didn't know anything about networking. I had a bachelor's degree in computer science, had a master's degree in computer science. Uh, when I graduated uh, from ETSU uh, with my master's degree, I had gone through every single class in the master's program and had never been bested by any student on any assignment, period. And uh, I just set my mind in the beginning of that effort that I was going to try to achieve this because academically I had never tried, I had never done anything like that. But I just committed myself to it and it happened. So when we went to PAL, didn't know anything about this. And very quickly, uh, they, uh, they put us in a room and told us how all this was going to play. And I'm going to get into this very quickly, but this is, a, uh, this is a methodology for managing your IT department. It doesn't require you to know anything about IT, but does hand to you the control of it. How much you spend, when you spend it what you're spending on, why you're doing it, puts you in control of it. And very largely we found that uh, uh, smaller businesses feel very out of control with this mechanism. That they don't know how to get a hold of this. And I'm going to try to show you today how to do that. Okay? And in effect, how this can actually save you a lot of money. Okay? Now, to begin with, we're going to start with the martial art. <laughs> Uh, now, I know uh, a little bit about the martial arts. Uh, I earned my black belt in karate about 10 years ago. And here within uh, uh, about six months, I'm going to have my black belt and have keto as well. Uh, so there will be two martial arts within which I've earned a black belt. Uh, and within that keto, I intend to move on and get my second band certified as an instructor and so forth. So that's just personal growth mechanism, just like standing here talking today, for me, is largely about personal growth. You know, this is about me becoming who and what I want to be. 
okay, as much as it is about trying to communicate to you what I have learned. All right? Now, in Hapkido, there are three defining principles to this art, okay? Uh, this is about 150 years old. Uh, Cho Yong So uh, in Korea created this art, and it's it spread around the world in the time. Uh, to begin with, uh, there's the water principle, which is all about fluidity and taking a movement uh, that is chopped up into several different steps and creating one fluid movement. Out of it. Okay. Uh, next is uh, the harmony principle, which is about moving with your opponent. Uh, if someone's coming at you, then you move with them and use their energy against them. Okay? And last is the circular motion, uh, which again, uh, if, <clears throat> if you're able to get a hold of someone, you can take them in a circle about yourself, use that acceleration to add force to what you're doing. They get off balance, they have to walk the big circle while you stay in one place. And then you can work it back against them take them to the ground. So it gives you a lot of leverage, a lot of energy that you wouldn't normally have and it lets a smaller person work very effectively against a larger person. So with these three little simple principles this entire martial art is built and it's very, very, very effective. If you've ever seen the movie uh, 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 Born Supremacy or any of that series, all the fight sequences in there are built out of Hapkido. Okay. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, some of the very techniques that he does in those fight sequences, uh, we've learned in his, uh, in his school. Now, where I'm trying to go here is making that we're stable. And the three principles that we live by in doing that. Okay. Now, these principles, largely they work because they were handed down to us from a gentleman who built a $200 million enterprise from nothing. So this person, Jim Powell, my father, he knows how to build a business. Okay? And when we started, this is what he told us to do. He said, keep it simple. And being right out of school, that was very challenging for me. You know, I wanted to run everything in the wall. And he said, no, 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 no. You're going to keep it simple. Make it work. It's got to work all the time. We work for coal companies. They change their mind about what they're doing three times a day. We've got to re-engineer everything. Every time they do that, we have got to be up all the time. Manage the cost. And fundamentally what that means is that you need to be in control of what you spend and when you spend it and how much you spend it. Okay? And you can't do that unless it's stable. In an environment where things are breaking all the time, you don't have any say over when that happens and where it happens and in what way it happens. So this is completely reactive on your part and you're just having to spend, 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 spend to keep things going, to get things back up. But in a stable environment, you're not doing that. You're planning ahead. And you're saying, I'm going to spend here, I'm going to spend there, I'm going to spend down there. And we'll get into that for a little more. Now, <clears throat> here's a few basic examples, short-term examples and long-term examples of how this plays. We had a business, they were at that time not a client that called us, they said the server's down, we're not working, uh, can you come over here and take a look at this? We said sure. And uh, sure enough, uh, the workstations in the environment couldn't communicate with the server and it was having some sort of issue and they had proposals for $25,000 servers they had been given to them by two other entities that had came in and looked at the situation and said, look, that thing's so old. We're going to do you a favor. We're just not even going to touch it. And we said, you mind if we look at that? Yeah. There's always more than one answer to something. You mind if we look at it? 
it, sure. So we went through the system logs, we found some error messaging that looked interesting to us. And did a little research and found an answer and put it in place and put the server back to work. And within 30 minutes of us walking in the door, they were working. Okay. And they took that those $25,000 proposals and they shredded them. Okay. And then we came in the next week and we sat down and we said, look, you got a couple of ways to go here. You can either stay on this eight-year-old server until it dies. Okay, that's what you want to do. Uh, which probably is not far away, just so you know. You can pay us about half of this amount, a little less. Uh, we, we offered them a $10,000 refill. And we'll take the machine that you got, the software that you got, and we'll bring in our own machine. We'll take the software, put it on our machine, come swap it out. Put you right back to work, same day. We won't be down hardly at all. We'll take your machine, your software, back to our office. We'll diagnose the machine for a month, make sure that it's a viable piece of equipment still yet. We'll reload all the software. We'll bring it back and swap it out. Okay? And this is really not a long-term solution. This is a solution that says, I don't have the money right now, but I need to do something. So what can I do? You can do this. You can reload it. Okay? And you can buy yourself some time. And in two years, go find the $25,000 it takes to put in a new server. You just bought yourself two years to find this money and to keep everything going. And that's what they did. They reloaded it. They bought two years of time. Then they put in a new server. They did what they wanted to do. They did it the way they needed to do it. They mapped it to their cash flow. And you know, we try to give everybody an opportunity to do things like this. Because there's more than one way to do it, and we need to work tightly with what's going on in that business to create these solutions. <clears throat> this was an unstable environment. Uh, I say unstable largely because uh, it hadn't no one had really tried to uh, make it so. Uh, this business uh, was in a client. They were buying blocks of time. Uh, and because they had already spent the money, and whenever anything would come up, they would say, uh, just have these people come in and fix it, because we've already paid for it. And they had these people coming in all the time. Well, they were spending 50000 a year on these blocks of time. They thought they had a good solution. And the management changed. And the management knew about us. And they brought us in. And we went through the environment, showed them how to stabilize it. And we went from 50,000 a year in blocks of time to 10,000 a year. And them calling us for something every three months instead of every other. Uh, one of our clients had uh, a large logistic issue with ordering materials, delivering of those materials, and distribution of them to job sites. And they thought that uh, this large software package would solve their problem. And they called us in and said, hey, you want to put this in? Uh, this was going to be a huge project. Okay? It's going to be around $100,000. And we said, uh, because we didn't feel that they fully had a grasp of it, of what was going on. <clears throat> we said, you know, uh, Pat's able to estimate uh, a $30 million coal plant in a spreadsheet. And they don't do that because how powerful Excel is. Okay, they do it because of the people and the process that's involved. And we feel like you don't have a handle on the process yet. You probably got the people just fine, but you don't have a process for doing this. And you need to know how it is that you want to accomplish this before you go pick out this software. Because if you don't have the process before you pick up the software, you probably won't solve the problem. Or you won't solve it as well as you could. 
you need to know what has to happen before you pick the software so that you know that it's able to do what you need. So they said, okay, okay. Uh, they, you know, they, they, they put the idea for the software back in the pocket and they uh, brought out Excel. They were trying to track it and sure enough, they were able to solve their problems with Excel and the use of several people to track this information and they put that money right back in the pocket. Uh, this is, uh, uh, this is uh, uh, the environment that uh, Kurt was talking about. Uh, this is an accounting firm. Six months out of the year, they work seven days a week, 12 hours a day, uh, doing taxes for people. Uh, they cannot ever be down. Uh, and uh, we simplified all their solutions uh, and used solid, stable equipment. And we've been able to create for them an environment where we've never had to go in where they're down in 10 years during this uh, winter. Everything that comes up, we're able to manage it and push it outside this production window and deal with it in that way. Now, <clears throat> real simply, what kind of network do you want to have? Okay, and I'll create two environments for you. One we call uh, the stable network model. The other, most of the world calls the break and fix model. Okay, and the stable, uh, it largely works all the time. Uh, solid solutions have been put in place. Uh, uh, there's not really any more money has been invested here. It's just a matter of how you do it. Okay. Uh, in the other environment, uh, there are regular issues uh, every other week, several a month. Uh, there's always someone to address it. You just pick up the phone, you call, they come to fix it. But when you think about it, which environment do you really want to operate your business in? Okay? Do you want to go to work and be able to focus holistically, totally, on what it is you need to accomplish and do? Or do you want to be dancing around issues that are impeded or going to slow down your ability to produce this work? So, if you had to choose, which environment would you want to have? And everybody that we've talked to, in the end, they, they, they want a stable environment. Now, I'm going to paint a real simple picture here, uh, just to make a point. Uh, and uh, these are all round numbers, it's a very uh, simple uh, picture, but if I, if, if, if I have a business with 10 employees and I'm paying each $30,000, then it's going to take me about a half a million dollars a year to operate that business. Uh, it's going to, uh, if I'm doing 40 hours a week, all year long, then that's going to mean about $360 an hour. And when I look at that right there, I go, 360, that's not that bad. I can do some downtime. That's not that, well, I can cut a corner here, cut a corner there, and it'll be all right. But if I take into consideration the, the work that I'm actually producing in those 40 hours, and I say, well, I'm going to cut these corners, and it's going to make me lose one hour a week in production. And what's going to happen is I'm going to lose $20,000 every year. So this is leakage. This is production law. And this is because the environment's not stable, it's because the employees aren't well serviced with their tool set. Because they, when they're working, they're not, they, they, they want, you know, on one side they've got you telling them, get it done, get it done. On the other side, they've got a tool set that doesn't work. So you put them between a rock and a hard place. Give them a tool set that works every day, and they'll get the work done. And this production will go up. And even if it just goes up by one hour, okay, you put $20,000 back in the body. And we found that whether uh, it's 10 nodes or it's 25 nodes, 10 computers or 25 computers, that very largely what you're talking about is an average of $10,000 a year. So you pay for that. And you've made some money. Now, 
to look at this in another way, <clears throat> these three items for us are very tightly related. Network stability, production loss, and investment. And in network one, uh, you can see how uh, the investment is low, the stability is low, and the production loss is high. And as you go from two to three to four, as the investment goes up, the stability goes up, and the loss comes down. Okay? Very simple mechanism. Now, when we go in, very largely, we find environments like year one where uh, they've been trying to spend as little as possible, uh, as near to nothing as they can. Okay? Uh, they're, uh, it's very unstable. The loss in production is high. And then by year two, uh, they bought in, uh, they make a significant investment, and they get it stabilized. And then from there on, they're making small investments to maintain that stability. And as they move into the next four years, they may have something like a recession, okay, come along, and they're just going to have to hold every dime they got. Well, that's fine. But the environment's going to slowly fade as it ages. And at the end, they're going to have to make a large investment. And if that's what the cash flow dictates, then that's what you got to do. Okay? But if you got the money, you can go ahead and spend that money and keep that stable environment intact and spread that out. So you can map this to your cash flow and keep this stable environment intact. This is the 90-10 rule. And very largely, this if you can say this about your environment, then you have a stable network. But what we found in backtracking and pulling apart all the expenditure for all of our clients over the last 10 years is that they're expending 90% of what they spend on growth and change. Okay? Growth and change is the business evolving. 10% of it was spent on maintenance. That's the fix sum. Okay? The normal model is 80% maintenance, 20% growth and change. We've completely inverted that. Okay? And, it, and, it, and in that model, it lets you decide how much and when. Now, in summary, and I tell this to, I tell this to everybody, because uh, for me this is very critical, you know, this, this is your business, money and these are decisions that you have to make now you don't have to pick out the computers you don't have to know how to network them you don't have to know anything about it but you do know that you want it to work if somebody comes in three times and works on something and sends you a bill and it still doesn't work they need to get sit down in the chair and say why is that not working? I already paid you for that. What's wrong with that? Okay? They come in and give you a solution. Oh, your server's dead. Here's a $25,000 proposal. Say, that's great. I want another solution. Give me two. I want another answer. And if they won't, then just throw it away and find somebody who will. Okay? You have the power here, not me. Don't let them in. And with that, I'm done. God bless you. <laughs> Do uh, you all have any questions about this? Very different way of looking at IT. So probably people are. How's that? It is. It's always hard to grasp earnestly. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've tried many ways. Put this on the table for people, uh, but uh, uh, we've we everywhere we everywhere we went, there were unstable environments, unpredictable environments, and after, depending upon the time that they wanted to take to do this transformation, some wanted to do it right away, some wanted to take a couple of years. Okay, again, it just depends on. Whether they, how long it takes them to believe, and how much money they have at what point in time. But 
once they get to the other side of it, it's a, uh, it's a complete, uh, total experience for them. They just they love it to death. And uh, we spend, uh, we spend probably 50% of our time as an IT department on PAL technologies, not on PAL companies. That's how stable PAL companies is. And that's what happens to each of these businesses. Now, if anybody wants to sit down and talk about this, I'd love to come and spend time with you. I don't have any issues with that at all. I'd love it, love it, love it.